Hello everybody, Chris here, and today we're going to talk about the basic toolbar of Google Docs and explain the basic functionality you can find on each of the different icons on this toolbar. Before we get into that though, if you'd like to donate to support the tutorials, you can do so at patreon.com slash christutorials. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. Starting from left to right, you have three ways to print a document inside of Google Docs. The first option is to hit the print icon on the toolbar. The second is to use a shortcut, which you can see right there, Control P. And the third is to go into the file menu and all the way to the bottom where you can hit print. Regardless of which way you start the print process, what it's going to do is convert your Google Doc into a PDF file and immediately start a download on it. Uh, this is the file, Untitled Document, that got created by that download process. And from here we can actually print it by clicking over here on the settings drop down and hitting print, which will finally pop up the printer dialog box. It may look different depending on which version of Windows you're currently using. This is what you would see for Windows 10 and when you have your settings set how you want them you would just go ahead and hit print. Now back to the toolbar, you have undo and redo. Whenever you type something into your document, you are making a change. A change which you can undo simply by hitting Control Z or the undo icon. Likewise, redo is the exact opposite of that. If you undo any of your changes and you decide that you wanted them after all, you simply hit redo to reinstate them. The Paint Format tool allows you to take the formatting you have for one paragraph of text, for instance, if we go over here to font and change it to impact font, we can use the paint format tool to copy this and then select new text in order to copy that font over to the new area. But it can also be used for bold, italicized, underline, and increased font sizes. Coming built into Google Docs are certain text styles, which you would expect out of another program like Microsoft Word, uh, such as the ability to set a title, a subtitle, or a heading. By default, these are going to have certain font sizes, they're going to have certain fonts, and they're just going to have a different way of presenting things for you. In other words, they are basically a series of the following options, including font, font size, and possibly bold italicized underline, that's just built into a single overall style. Now, speaking of all those different options, font determines how each character is written. In English, this would be A through Z, but other languages can have different fonts too. Although they're going to be the same characters, they'll be presented in a different way. And font size is just when you take those font characters and scale them up to a certain level on your screen. So we could hit font size 48, and the text is going to appear gigantic. Likewise, we can knock it back down to 9 or 10 for it to be quite small. Bold italicize and underline is just another way to alter how the text will look on screen without actually changing the font itself. So bold text is going to appear really thick, dark, black, and visible. Italicize will make the text slanted a little bit. And underline obviously is going to put an underline over whatever text we have selected. As you can see, we can include all three of these options, zero of them, or anything in between. Text color allows us to change the color of the text from black to anything else you desire. It can be one of these preset defaults, or it can be a custom color. And a custom color allows you to choose any color that's displayable on the web determined by the hex codes. If you search around on the internet, you can find plenty of different HTML color codes, which will work right here, or you can just click around and drag to get the color you want, and if you want it to be more close to black, have less actual color in it, you can drag this scale down where it removes some of the color, leaving behind black or a lack of color. A link or a hyperlink is where you take text and actually make clicking on that text point to a location generally on the internet, and it will take you there right in the web browser. So if we add a link here, we could say duckduckgo.com and we probably want to put the HTTP here, although it's not entirely necessary. Although I believe it's actually HTTPS, the secure version of HTTP. So now whenever we click on the link, we can actually just click on the URL address and it'll take us straight to the website we had that link to. 
Inserting a comment allows you to add a note to the document without actually writing on the document itself. So when we insert this comment, it's going to be something that appears over here on the side. It's something that's visible while you're viewing it in Google Docs, but it's not actually a physical part of the document itself. So we could say, I made this today, but nowhere on the document is it actually going to appear. It's going to be over here to the side for other people to see, other people who are viewing and editing your documents. This is more useful when you're working with other people, um, unless you just specifically need to write notes for yourself. Either way you want to use it, it's just text that won't appear in the document, but is associated with the document. Next come the alignment tools, which are fairly simple. Whenever you have a text or body of paragraph, left aligned, each line is going to start hugging the left margin of your page. That's this invisible line you can see right here pointed to uh, by the ruler up here. If you have it centered, then whenever a line of text doesn't cover the full width of the page, it's going to center the text inside of the writable area. Right align is the opposite of left align, where the text is always going to hug the right margin of the page, as you can see here. To demonstrate this last one, Justified, I rewrote the text a little bit, and the reason for that is that in order to see Justified work, you have to have white space between different words. So how Justified differs from left align here, you'll see that when a line has words that don't actually take up the full width of the, uh, the line spacing, it's going to expand this white space as necessary to fold the entire width between this margin point and this margin point, the left and the right margin. So when I changed it to justified, our lines now take up the full width of the page. However, this only applies to lines that don't have an ending. This third line has ended without anything after it. So this line, although it's using the justified format, doesn't have the white space stretch in order to get all the way to the right. With line spacing, we can increase the amount of white space between each line vertically. So if we set this to double, then what this is going to mean is that for every line of text we have, there's going to be an extra blank line of pure white space. If we set this to single, then there's going to be no real white space between the lines. It's just going to print the text as necessary. And you can also put everything in between there, including custom spacing. Now, one of the most important tools for any word processor is going to be lists. There's two types of lists. One is numbered lists and the other is bulleted lists. The difference here is that with a numbered list, obviously, it's going to be printing numbers so you can easily count them. So to start off our list, we have number one, the first item in our list. If we type in the item and hit enter again, it's going to go to number two and so on and so forth. However, if we change this to a bulleted list or use bulleted list by default, it's going to replace each of those numbers with a simple circle. However, a bulleted list doesn't necessarily have to be identified by circle on each line. You can also use different kinds of symbols, including arrows, squares, and by clicking the drop down, you can select between them. Likewise, with the numbered lists, there's different ways to represent numbers or basically items in a list, including the alphabet A, B, C instead of one, two, three. It's up to you what you want to choose. Now, when you're writing your documents, you can indent the different lines and paragraphs. When you hit these two icons up here, and decrease indent and increase indent, it's actually going to change it for the entire paragraph though. So if we hit increase indent, it's going to set an indent for this entire paragraph. If we hit decrease indent, it's going to move it over here to the left. And you'll notice that when we hit the indention icons over here, that it actually changes these little arrows and squares up here on the ruler bar. And the reason for that is that these mark the left indent on your page as well as the first line indent. So if you want to manually give an indent to an entire paragraph, you would drag this left arrow. And you can always change it back like so. But if you want the first line of a paragraph to be indented, as many school assignments would encourage you to do, you would instead click on the rectangle and drag that to where you need it. By doing this, only the first line is going to be indented and the rest of the paragraph will remain as is. Now, if you've made a lot of changes to how a paragraph looks as opposed to its default style, 
such as changing the font, the font size, or giving it bold italicized underline, or even indenting the paragraph, you can clear all of that by hitting clear formatting. And let's go ahead and indent this just so we can show that. So when you hit clear formatting, it's going to change the formatting of this entire paragraph, all of those different options we've set to make it back to the style we selected. So in this case, it's going to make it a heading one style, which is just simple Arial 20 point font and nothing else. So we hit clear formatting. And in this case, it went ahead and removed the indention. But if we changed our font to say Georgia and then cleared it, it's going to change the font back to Arial. So I hope this was a useful explanation of the basic toolbar inside of Google Docs. As you can see, you can get most of what you need done inside of Google Docs without using another more full featured application like Microsoft Word or Open Office. But there's still more to talk about inside of Google Docs. So if you want, you can subscribe to my channel and see my future Google Docs tutorials as they come out. Aside from that, I've been Chris. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.